Hey guys, welcome back to ESL for the Vainglory Cup Series. This is the Cup Series number six, and I'm Jace Kappen, joined by Don John. And now we're getting away with our second semifinal of the night. It's going to be Team HC up against Wild Panthers, and it's going to be a doozy, I think. I think it's going to be pretty cool to see how Team HC, any new comps they come up with, since they were one of the original teams to show something new with the Celeste, yeah. the Cruel, and the Jewel. And Glaive. They pulled in a Glaive as well they, once. Yeah. Yep. They're, always, cool they're always there with some surprises and trying to pull something new. And we already have the bands. Team HC banned Ringo and the Wild Panthers banned Fortress. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's... Let's go ahead and start this one up and let's get this one underway just to see how this one's going to kick down. Remember, the winner of this game goes to play against Red Team 1 in the finals. And it looks like the picks have stars. Going to drop you straight into that and see what they're going to be going for both these teams. And it looks like we're going to be seeing Fortress come out of the Wild Panthers. Yeah, for sure. I mean... They know that um, uh, HC can't play him. They saw how strong it actually worked for the other teams who picked them already today. And let's try again. That it, th I, I really don't know why that's Yeah, it shouldn't up. bother. As soon as we are in, it shouldn't bother anymore. So that pedal soft pick threw me off for a second there. But it's a cruel Shizzle in the end. Dizzle. And we do have best Celeste U playing Celeste. That's going to be great. It makes it easy to say his name. <laughs> yes. Um, and I'm always a big fan of seeing some uh, some Celeste and also Shizzle My Nizzle. Shizzle My Nizzle. It's a great name. It is a great name. But here we go. Dropping back into the fold. Fortress. Okay, this is where we're going to find out if he's going to be able to actually sh or to show his true power. We saw him earlier on in the Red Team 2 against Unknown Game. And it was a one-sided affair. So it was really kind of hard to judge exactly how Fortress worked out. But we're going to see this time how it works. And... Well, you've seen the power of him already with his passive. Sitting next to a, a or an ally for one second gives him a speed increase as long as he sticks near him, and it gets him out of the base a little bit quicker. Yeah. So lane Imperium going probably for the the crit jewel, which uh, actually best of less you showed us. So beautiful the first time for me. Yeah. Um, actually, I saw a really heavy crystal uh, crit. I'm always keeping saying crystal. Well, we've actually crit. seen a jewel versus jewel where one was weapon damage and one was crystal power. Okay, what? Why are they? Oh, they saw Bestless. You actually, I didn't even see him going back here, and they tried to to pick him off here. A rocket leap, another 11 seconds. Just a bit of poke by if they're Bestless. You. Well, that, that's that's good though because now he can't go too deep into his lane, and um, it might be a bit easier for Imp at the moment since he is melee and Celeste, obviously not. Okay, so interesting to see how that one kind of worked out in the beginning. Um, yeah, like I said before, we did see Jewel versus Jewel. One was weapon power, one was crystal power, and the crystal power one was dependent on having a Koshka lock down someone so his big red button would instantly yeah. destroy him. Uh, the weapon power one, once he survived the initial burst, he jumped straight on top of him, and you can much guess where it went from there with 2,100 crits. Yes. Or, well, 2,100 damage across the entire team in a matter of a second. Yeah, the thing is, like you mentioned it, it's it's super difficult to hit three members. I mean, to hit one if you're playing versus Ataka um, was the pick of uh, Palmatoro. What I totally agree, was the jewel. I mean, he didn't see that the enemy is going to pick a jewel, but he probably... Well, he guessed it, so he went for that Taka, and we saw that a couple of times already, actually, people using Taka to kite over Jewel. And actually, you can, once, you can dodge the Thunderstrikes, and the second big thing is, Jewel is super crazy weak from behind, because she only has her ba her normal shield and um, armor from the sides and the front. So, um, th therefore, Taka is a really good counter pick against Jewel. And there might be first blood though, if the wolf jumping back in, truth of tooth. So trading that kill, actually not trading it, getting the first blood for Team Wild Panthers. Oh, Lif. Oh, he goes for an invoker though instead. Not exactly sure where he went for that one, but now Lif trying to go back in. He's got to be very careful. The explosion from the scout wants to finish him off. They're so low. He can pick up a double here. Linvoker trying to run away now as Palmatora looking for a second kill. And looks like he will back away because Jewel is heading down from that top side. But that was, I think that was way a big, or way too big of a mistake to be making this early on. Yeah. Oh, actually picking up Celestian Lane finally for Imp. <clears throat> getting the Thunderstrike probably into her and... See, I, I feel this is a lane that Celeste should 100% win. But 
I mean, she still was quite lowish from from um, the poke of if early game, so that probably helped Imperium actually to lock down that kill. And his rocket leap wasn't cooldown, so he probably hit it. That's the thing. And if you um, see him rocket leap into you, core collapse right on your feet. Yep. And they lands right into a stun. And then you're both stunned, and then you, I mean, ideally should be poking pretty well too. <laughs> I mean, Pest Celeste, you probably knows that since... Come some, on, Celeste! Since somehow that is his name, right? And uh, yeah, Palmatoro going in, getting a bit, um, actually, the target here by uh, Truth of the Teeth. And no one really, fi yeah, I always need to recap and try to figure what, what the name actually is. It's just funny, because it's like, his English isn't your first language, and you're saying it better than I would be saying, <laughs> with like, just learning the name. Ooh. Invisible, but the flare gun unveiling him, and that's for the second kill for Team HC. In lane, nothing happened. If somehow survived that, Best Celeste U is a bit low, and Imperium is, is doing a good job in lane so far. He's already on 2k gold. It's going to be interesting. What ways is he going? Is he going for the heavy steel? Maybe a Sura Blade, maybe a mask first? And when is he starting for the, for the crit? Uh, someone just died back there, but I want to capture this fight since they are both on the wrong side here. Just one Thunderstrike going in. They are still fighting back here. Then Volker tries to escape here in his own jungle. Getting a bit of damage, but he should be fine if he's not continuing that. Let's check how good Celeste is doing. Imperium the is still Jukes. trying to chase. Oh, oh dead. Rocket Leap kill. That's interesting. Imperium Goomba has stopped. no escape right now, and Lin Volker is getting, actually getting picked up by a Scout Trap there. So he's quite low. And if... Well, not, nothing much he can do in that particular situation. Because, like, as as Fortress, you can't really grant your, your teammates an escape. You only mm -hmm. can grant them an actually movement speed towards enemies and not for running away from them, so... Yeah, I was thinking, like, you know, Arden. Like, I was thinking, why is, there, why is Shizzle playing Cruel as support? I mean, he kind of acts like Scarf a little bit. He has that ridiculous damage that he can do with his smite, and he doesn't even need items for it. Um, where Scarf did a lot of damage off of basic attacks when you did hit an ability. Uh, I was wondering though, Arden, would that be a little bit better for Taka? Because you can lock, a, you know, lock someone into an area and give him a speed increase as well. But either way, Shizzle getting a little bit low on HP. He's going to have a heal off of his smite. And Dead Man Rush is keeping him relatively healthy too. You see though, how, how slow Shizzleman is. Yeah, that bleed is ridiculous. But you know what? It's not stopping Palmatoro. He's looking for a second kill. He gets it. And how is he going to get Imperium? Oh, oh, dodged that oh, Thunderstrike. Big red button. <laughs> Perfect. I the like that. Button, how, how he, like, he was looking the one side, but shooting it in the yeah. other way. So Celeste felt kind of safe for a second. And then just a big red button into her face and falling down. Nicely done. I like, though, how Palmatoro actually dodged that Thunderstrike. Mm -hmm. He's proving he's pretty damn good on, uh, on Taka. It's 6-4. to four, Not that big of a difference in kills, but gold, it's getting pretty... Pretty one-sided. You can see 5.5 to 3.7. But the scout trap again, gonna do some decent damage. Lift looking for a catch. Where she will be backing away. And Palmator, I think you just take him on. But he, does he expect Imperium and Levoker to be there right behind him? Oh, someone's getting caught. Yeah. Ooh, the rocket leap. Max range rocket leap jump there onto Shizzleman Isla. Shizzleman Isla is the target. One rocket leap. Yeah, not rocket leap, on Thunder Strike. One Thunder Leap. Thunder rocket leap. strike. Rocket leap strike. <laughs> Face died. I'm looking for another fight though. Why are they get Why? You just lost one of your men. Why would you go for another fight yet again? Palmatoro. But doing just, a good job. Oh, I mean. He's cleaning them up and he's doing a fantastic job of stop this. I'm not really sure why they, you know, committed for the fight again, but we're seeing it as Palmatoro's gotta be careful now. He doesn't have his actually no, he does have his stealth back up, but I don't think he has the energy to do it. Doesn't matter, he gets a kill nonetheless with the help of Celeste. And they're able to force them back. 7-5. Two seconds on Solar Storm. Is he going to hit it, she, though? He's got to be careful. Yeah, she Where needs, is he going? Needs the vision for it. He has, a, he has a rocket leap. Yeah. He and should it, be able to get away. And it's not enough damage. Not yet. But still, I was curious. That's probably why he chased. Oh, they keep dying on odd places. Where did he die? Oh, they chased. Oh, I didn't even see that he run, ran back there. So much going on here right now. So... Uh, there it is. Is he stealing it? Wonderful. Wonderful. That's totally worth it. I mean, if you're dying out of that, that's it's digging for four, no, nearly four minutes, so that's mm. nearly 300 gold. And if just one member is dying for it, that's like perfect. I mean, that's nearly 900 gold for your team. And they needed that since the gold is um, totally going for HC so far.
So perfectly stolen by Imperium there, jumping in. He's actually finishing the Soul Blade, and it's looking like... Oh, there he go. Soul Blade, and it's since he's on the minion's foot. Also a new item, by the way, the first item in Vainglory, which is grant you critical chance and damage for a tier 1 item. Um, probably going for the Trine's Monocle. So that's what I'm curious about. Does that... Does the passive work? But the first time you hit a champion once you buy or a hero once you bought that item? Yes. And you can sell it and you can rebuy it and it's working again. Huh. But I'm not quite sure why you why you would do that. I mean yeah, 300 I mean, gold, oh, right? Lift. Holy crap. Just getting deleted here by Palmatoro doing a really good job on actually a solo play as well. He has a weapon infusion, not quite pop. That's quite early for a weapon infusion. I mean they are what, three K gold ahead, so he has totally the, the time and not the time, the gold actually to buy that. Best Celeste getting picked up meanwhile in lane. Pomatoro jumping in again. One member short, getting two tower hits, actually dying to the tower. In the end, Linvoka is doing enough damage there. That oh, shiver Fully still. stacked, fully stacked. The tower is doing so much damage on him. If, is he able to? No, the tower again. I mean, that's three kills from a tower right now. Two kills to a tower. <laughs> no, three actually. And I was an ace, funny enough, too. So it gives him the, the minions a little bit of a buff to push through. Let's yeah. see if they actually do get any damage onto the turret, but a little bit of a weird play. You're seeing the damage that Palmatoro can do, though, was ridiculous. And I, I do like the Sorrow Blade pickup. It's different than the Tension Boat we've been seeing in Atakas mostly as a first pickup. Well, we have it we on the other side. Yeah. Um, any thoughts on the comparison between the two? So, like, the Tension Boat is like all we ever saw out of Atakas in the beginning, and it was even questioned by, uh, I think, you and Blueberries of why you'd go that first. So, the thing with Tension Boat, a lot of people, well, let's just check. Now, Celeste is dying again, and we are not seeing it. Another thunder. I mean, you see those thunder strikes already creating 361 damage. There's a big red button coming out. The core collapse was good though, but not enough. So dying to Imperium here, playing a very good duel. And to come back to that tension bow, if they are not trying to go in here, Shizzle Mesl. No, okay, he's getting out of there. So tension bow. A lot of people are saying tension bow is just an early game item, but you need to like consider that tension bow is also granting you um, piercing, armor pierce, and especially if your enemy is not buying armor, why not use it? It's still super effective. And that's, I, I, I had, like, that was my opinion maybe like a month ago that I thought, why, why buy a tension bow? It's, it's falling off if you're like going into a late game, a long game, you know that you're like in a really high competitive matchup, you know that's going to be like not just an 8 minute stomp or a, a 12 minute stomp. Why go for a tension bow? It's not granting you so much like, I don't know, like it's not worth it to mm. buy it for, for late game, but it's, it is actually since... Since you have that additional armor piece, and especially if your enemies are not buying any armor, you're basically doing two damage. Just hitting through through everything. I'm actually curious, is there... There's no items that give you flat pen, right? It's just always percent? I, I, I believe so, yeah. There's... Wait, did he just minion candy his wolves? Yeah. I didn't know he could do that. The gold mine is on a sliver of HP, and Palmatoro is already forced back immediately. Shizzle, he's in the middle of all three men, and it looks like he should fall for some Palmatoro. Uses ultimate just to get a little bit of extra distance. The Voker does go down, and that would be Celeste falling as well. Palmatoro will die, and now it's Shizzle by himself. And somehow, Wild Panthers, they pick up the ace, they come back, they lose their gold mine, it seems, but they do start to claw away at this lead of gold that Team HC had, and this should be a turret, I would assume. Yeah, we saw that actually a couple of times from um, um, Gangsters, if I'm not totally thrown off here. I think that Gangsters used actually minion candies so often for boosting the gold miner. Huh. I mean, I, I don't have clear stats for that because you can't read that any anywhere how much damage actually a minion miner is. Probably you can read it somewhere in the, in the deep forums, but like actually in the game you can't get that stats. And um, would be interesting, like how much more damage? Does it work on the Kraken? The gold miner, the, the, um, the candies, the candy, minion candy. I don't think so. Because if it worked on the Kraken, that would be ridiculous. I think the only thing which is um, affecting Kraken is Wallhorn, okay, and the heal of Adagio. Well, it looks like Linvoker might get caught out here. The Shiver Steel well, is working pretty well, but all oh, the speed ups he's able to get away. And it looks like he should be able to survive. But Palmatar, he's not done just yet. Oh, he's a spot out lift. This could be a free kill. He's able to do it before, but the damage isn't there that much this time. Looks like Lyft has been able to build oh, up. Oh, Lyft gets up. the full stacks up. Nearly. I think it's one or two more. Meanwhile, Imperium getting picked up here by Best Celeste U with beautiful Heliogenesis. It's it's like a super intense, intense team fights on both sides all the time. It's like always going one way, uh, not on one, not only one way. That's Oof. what I meant. Oof. 
Super over from that, doing some good damage. I'll take this one core collapse, but it's not even going to take that as it'll dive straight in for that. That'll be another turret falling this time in favor of Team HC. And the Voker, yeah, you better back away. There's nothing you can do much up against that. And that will be 15 to 12. Very kill heavy game. 13 and a half minutes in, and we've had 27 kills. And there's a huge gold lead now built up for Team HC again. Yeah, it, it's it's 5k, but um, just to point it out, Scout Traps, barely seen on the fold so far. Like, I, I'm trying to find one, actually. No. Seems like no one is, is, is curious about Vision. I mean, they have best less you. That's basically a roaming Scout Trap, because with that Heliogenesis, you can actually spot every every bush before you're face checking it, like if is doing right now. Rocket Leap coming in into Shizzleman is Shizzleman is getting a call collapse on top from actually best of you three members call collapse. That's beautiful. And the solar storm falling up, not enough damage to kill anyone so far. If should be the first target who's going down but of Team Wild Pandas, but he's still alive. This somehow. is free kills for Palmatoro. Shizzle will go down. He'll fortunately only get one though, that's the are able to escape. But that was a two on three fight, and you saw Team HC almost win that fight. That I mean, I mean, they were all so low by the call collapse and the. Fo I mean, he he best or less saw call collapse connecting to three members of Wild Panthers, and then uh, for sure you need to use your solar storm into that because mm. when do you have like when is the option for you to put actually th so much damage into the whole team? So, but somehow they managed to to survive through that, and it's probably also to the fountain of a fortress. That was pretty ridiculous. Uh, I'm really curious what could happen if Palmatoro was there. Like that one certainly would have been an ace. It most certainly have been another tower. Um, but here we go, 1450 in the game. Kraken about to spawn in. I'm wondering if we're gonna see maybe Team HC started off right away. If they knew what we knew, they would see that uh, Wild Panthers did go back to base. The speed record, by the way, is 11 seconds. Still, 11 second Kraken? Yeah, still a uh, hold by Red Team 1. I believe it was an ESL stream. I'm, I'm, I think so, yeah. We saw, like, we saw actually gangsters pulling it in nearly 12 to 13 seconds, but no one faster than that. Hmm. And it was in 1.4 with the jewel, so we'll see. Someone is going to beat that. Beat that. <laughs> Ooh, the deep forms. What's the password? <laughs> Sorry, <to> Twitch chat. <laughs> uh, say coffee or. Talk about what you were saying earlier in the deep forms about mini candy in the crack or in the uh, kraken or the the mi or the gold mine or minion mine. I mean, there are probably somewhere stats about that, but like they are not that easy to assess. Probably, I don't know. It's just well, now it's just a big standoff around kraken and the mini mines taken one for each team, trying to counter it, not get pushed in too much. The genesis could again spot them out. And it's going to force them back in. They can't really afford to fight Ooh. on top of these. And the stun going to come in on the lift. Not the desired target. And a Celeste is going to get focused down. And he's going to fall before he can do much. The core collapse is good. He doesn't get his ultimate off. But he's still getting healed. The Huns are too much. And he's still alive. Imperium will fall. They used everything they could onto him. And he still lived. You called it. You called it like five minutes ago. You said, best less you. The only thing she needs to do, or he needs to do, is pulling a core collapse right beneath him when he's getting approached by Rocket Leap from Imperium. That's what he did. Imperium jumped in. He was nearly going to stun her a second time during that team fight. But the call collapse, perfect. I mean, that's that's the best thing. If, if there is a team fight on, on really close um, meters, maybe, mm -hmm. um, and Celeste can use that call collapse, that's, that's like a game changer during a team fight. Oh, they might have overextended a little bit too much, so Celeste is getting chased with the Kraken's coming. The Core Cop's going to be missing, though, as Levoker does dodge away. But he's still kiting. He's actually successful in this. Here comes Shizzle and Nizzle from the side. Celeste on a sliver of HP. No fountains to save him this time. He will fall, and there will be Palmatoro to fall thereafter. And Shizzle just trying to stick around to keep them off the Kraken. But you know what? He will fall and just... Actually, won't even fall. No, no, no. They, will, they will go back to I mean, defend. mean, he's bleeding still. He just tried to get Kraken some free And that Kraken got them nothing. No. Just 500 gold, actually, for every member of Team Wild Panthers. Wow. So we'll, we'll see, especially Imperium finished his first Triance Monocle. And still, we don't have... No, we don't have... Oh, there it is. There's armor. There's more armor just coming in by Palmataro, thinking about it. To uh, get actually uh, a, a bit of armor against... Um, mm -hmm. I mean... We, we talked about it, right? I don't need to recap that. And oh, do you see those infusions? One, just one ran out on Linvoker, but he went on double infusions, and we have still infusions running on Jewel. Yeah, it's kind of fortress. The stats it gives you, it's relatively cost-effective. 
uh, especially when you're at the brink of almost losing the game. And you want to be the team to play against Red Team 1 in the finals. We could see a rematch of Cup 4 with Team HD up against Red Team 1 if they can pull it off. Oh, yeah. But it hasn't been determined just yet. And would be curious if, like, Red is going to ban Jewel just because... They got red, wrecked once. Mm. But no, I don't think so. I I'm mean, curious what they would ban. Yeah. Shizzle it. Oh, the stun right onto the uh, Imperium as he was jumping in, but Celeste hasn't really connected too much just yet. The core collapse, I haven't seen it unless he missed it earlier on. The focus is, is on so cooldown. good. The focus is so good by mm. Team HC. Always Jewel, always Imperium falling first, or they tried, try it at least. And yeah, Lin Volker just getting killed here. Oh, he's kiting it quite long, that though. That auto-attack. But, but still, no oh, chance. Lith. Right, he will get back to base, so he will stop the ace from coming in. And yeah. there's not really much they can accomplish off the back of that, except take away a minion mine. Yeah, the minions are not pushing right now for them, but still, I mean, it's 10 seconds, 25 on Linvoker. That turret is nearly down. That's basically one Heliogenesis, two, one auto-attack, and it's down. So, right, well. so they will at least get that. So I guess yep. the the Kraken did work out for them a little bit by getting all that damage in. I mean, they needed to do it, right? I, it's, why not capture it? It could go, it could go, could go bad for them. They are dying out of it like they did, and they are not getting one tower out of it. They're giving basically free gold. But I mean, why not capture it if you can easily pick it up? Mm -hmm. well, and the Kraken will be responding in relatively soon too, so they'll have that objective to work with. But the focus, like you said, I'm still just amazed though at one of those you know fights we saw earlier. I think it was two fights ago where Celeste was the focus, and the fountains were just amazing to keep him alive. And he was just spamming ability after ability to try to use that Eve of Harvest just to stay healthy enough so he wouldn't get dropped. But now Lift might get caught out. Invoker to get hit with the stun, even while he was stealthed up, and he should fall almost immediately. Celeste is he going to use the Solar Storm? This Core Collapse lands on a two. He's going to follow up with the ultimate, but it doesn't really do any damage, unfortunately. And now he's going to be up against a Pyramid, a one-on-one, -on -one, as that will be the first kill coming in over onto Invoker. Lift will be chased away by Palmatoro, and that'll be the ace coming in. And that will be the victory for Team HC to get to the finals in now three of the five, almost well, six cups. They've done it in cup two, four, and now today in cut number six. And they've earned it. I mean, this is a team that kind of came out of nowhere, and they are playing really damn good. I mean, we don't even have Colab here anymore because they got knocked out by Prodigy in the round of 32? 16. 16. Yeah. And, yeah, well, we, we are actually having a great final. I'm looking forward to, forward to that, to be honest. Th that's going to be interesting, especially I'm looking forward to what is Team HC doing. Like... Are they pulling something totally new? Or are they just sticking with what they are doing right now already? I'm not sure, but we'll find out in just a little bit of time. Um, quick before we do head to the break, Red Team 1 or Team HC? Which one do you think is going to be the, the victor of this? Without seeing picks, Red 1. Okay. All right. Well, we'll find out in a little bit of time, guys, as we do go to a short little break. We'll be bringing you the finals now of Cup number 6. We'll see you guys in a few minutes.